Hi, welcome back to another tutorial on Adobe Lightroom version 4. Um, in our last video we did we did some eye changing of colors uh, or enhancing the iris of an eye and we got a comment asking us if we would better explain some of the sliders that are used that um, that are used quite so often. So we were asked if we could explain the feather, the flow, the density, and tint. So what we're going to do is we're going to step through those individually and show you how they work. So right now we have an image that's uh, very good contrast. It's black and white. The model is in black and white. We have a white and red background. So this allows us to use those sliders uh, pretty effectively. So right now we're in the library module. We're going to have to move over to the develop module. And we'll just zoom into the picture and make it easier for you to see what we're doing. And where you find those sliders is under the adjustment brush. So we're just going to click on the adjustment brush. And then as we come down, we're going to find the, the under the brush, you have the size, feather, flow, and density, and auto mask. So we'll show you how these um, work on an image and why you would use them. Um, first off is the size. So the size is, if you move it left to right, is how big of an area you're going to work on. So when you do the pictures of an eye, let's say, you want something just a little bit about about the same size as the, the area you're working on. But for this, we're going to use a big brush so we can show you what those sliders do. The feather, if you move the feather, you're going to see the outside ring show up. Now what this does, this is, gives you an area in which to make, um, blend, basically blend the outside edges of your your, uh, your blend the outside edges of what the color you're changing. So we have a color blue here. So if we take off the feather and we leave the flow and the density at 100 percent, if we mark on the image now, you're going to see a very harsh color. The edges are very defined, very strong. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo the brush, and now if we bring the feather up to say about 50 percent. Now you're going to see the outside ring. So if we do that same thing now, you're going to see it's much softer on the edges. So this would actually help you, especially if you're trying not to overstep a boundary on an image, uh, especially around the eyes. So if we do it at 100%, you're going to see now it's even smoother yet. So basically the feather is the outside ring and how you're going to blend from the harshness to the outside. So the next thing we do is the if we let's say we keep the feather at about 50%. We're going to bring the flow down to say about 50% now. What will happen now as you see as we do this, you have very little change as far as the color goes. You have to move it quite a bit in order to get that to show up. So kind of like a like a paint can, um, you know, be a little bit farther away or something being really close to it. And if you do it at the flow, it's say, it's like pressure. Uh, best way to explain it. I guess uh, Photoshop uses pressure. But if you put it at the lowest setting, you'll see almost no change in the image whatsoever. So that goes along with the flow. So if we raise the flow up to 100%. Now you're going to see we have another really harsh coloring. So... They almost work the, the same. Um, the density, if we drop the density down, again, you have no change at all in your image. So the density and the flow almost work hand in hand as, as one slider, you know, for the most part. So if you drop them down to, say, halfway on both of them, you can see now you, you you very seldom even change just slightly the color of your image. So what we're going to do is the feather, you know, when you're working with an image, especially around the eye, you want a smaller brush. But we want a feather so we don't overstep the outside of the eye. The flow you want, you don't want it 100%. It's too harsh, so you can keep this around 75 and the density, the same way. We keep that up there about 75. So as you paint on it, you get a little bit better coloring 
but not real, real hard. Okay? So what you can do then, if you, let's say we'll just do some work on her eye again. So we'll remove this down, and now you can see that she's got some green eyes. So we're going to go back to that same brush, and then we're going to go down to the bottom under the the size, and we're going to pick a size just a little bit bigger than her eye, with the inside circle and the outside circle just being the, which would be the feather, just on the outside of her eye. We're going to leave the flow at 75% and the density at 75. And if you, we'll pick a different color here, we'll pick a... Um, a green to help bring out the color of her eyes and we just kind of paint around the image you can see now her eye is much greener in color but because of the feather it doesn't go outside of the eye then what you what you can do under the tint is you, now the tint you can actually use the slider to actually brighten the eye or darken them up a little bit so if we go real far to the green side of it, you're going to see that their eyes are overly green. We don't want to do that. So the, the tint is actually going to help in bringing the color of the image. Um, you know, whether you want to change it to, a, let's say, a blue, uh, however color her eyes are. So we'll reset it and go back into that same brush. So let's make her have blue eyes now. So we're going to pick a blue. We'll use a smaller, I'll go to a smaller brush still. So let's bring this down to about, nine's about a good size. And we'll just paint it on her eye. And see, now you can see that we've gone from a more of a green to more of a blue color. And if you go up to the tint, the, the tint is actually more your greens. So you'd start to change her and really brighten up the color of her eye to, uh, to a green. And then if you bring it the other way, you actually kind of make it more toward the blue. And that's what we did in the last video. Um, if you want to make her eyes bluer, we would use the, the temperature slider above it. would actually really start to bring out the blue color of an eye. If we went the other way, it would make it more of a yellow. So the temperature and tint, they're, they work the same way. They are just a different color. Where the tint is more the, the greens and the magentas and the blue... And the yellow is more of the the temperature. Okay. So what we're going to do is reset this image, get her back to the normal color. And the other one that we have in here that um, it's overlooked probably as much as any of those um, is the auto mask. You know, so people always ask, uh, what is the auto mask? Okay, so here's what the auto mask is. In order to use the auto mask, you have to have an image with good contrast of colors. Because if you don't, it'll bleed over into the other color. So, with the white background of the and then the red background, let's say you wanted to change this to a different color. You know, you can jump into Photoshop um, to do it that way, or you can actually use Lightroom to do it. But you have to have the auto mask checked. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to. A, let's go to a green on this one. So we want. The same type of a setting we would use on a, uh, any other photo with this one. we, we got to have feather, so I want to keep this up through about uh, about 80%. The flow, I'm going to raise this to about 80. I want a little bit harsher flow. I'm going to use the keypad to change it. And the density, we're going to keep that at 80 as well. So what you can do then is just start painting. We're going to use the inside ring as a guide keeping the outside ring on the outside of the color we're working on so it doesn't overflow into the next color so we just start painting on this image you'll see now that we start to change the color of the pillar behind the, the model but we're not changing the color of the reds um, that's below it so we're just going to do this real quickly if I was doing this for a client um, obviously I'd be doing this with a, a keypad uh, make this a little bit faster so but what it does is it, it picks up the difference in colors and doesn't over bleed with the feather to allow you to change a color without going it being exactly perfect um, you know with Photoshop you have to go in and, and use some different tools to do it but um, this one works just as well just as fast 
So now we change that to green, and you can see that we didn't change any of the colors in the background, the reds, the golds, uh, even the model's hair we did not even change, even though the brush touched it, but we used the feather to make sure it stopped at that point. So if we went up here to the, the tin again, or the temperature, we could actually now change the color of that pillar completely. Uh, we take it the other way, we're going to take the color out of it, almost make it almost what it was but with just the hint of the color we added to it same thing at the temperature we wanted to change this to a blue now we change that pillar blue or we want to go the other way we can change it yellow so all of these uh, adjustment brushes are in the same section and that's how you use them and that's why you would use them the brush size is actually the what you're using as far as you know the size of the image you're working on the feather is the member the outside ring uh, this will help you so that it doesn't spill over um, into the, the next part of your image or you don't want it too harsh is what you're looking for. And feather and flow, they're, you know, um, in density, I should say, the, the flow and density work very similar to each other. Um, and the best way to, th to think of that is, like I said, is uh, let's think of a, a paint can, uh, paint uh, spray paint. The closer you are to a, an object, that would be like having a high flow it's really harsh on the um, whatever you're spraying on. Um, the density is the pressure in which it pushes it out. But by backing those off with the flow and the density, we like taking that paint can farther away. You get a broader area, but you get a lighter flow um, on the object. So, so I hope this helps. Um, if you have any more questions or like us to do anything else, another uh, video for you. Um, Please just drop us a comment, uh, send us an email, and we will do our best to go through the, the parts that you're struggling with. Um, Lightroom is a great program. It help you out quite a bit if you are just getting into it like the, um, this person was. Um, we'll help you step through it to get this thing up and running so you're comfortable using it. Um, hope this helps. So, like I said, drop us an email or send us a comment. Thank you very much.